Okay, so this is the brightest time of the year. Happy Diwali to all of you. Now, we have been reviewing phones for five years now, all the way from 15,000 to 1.5 lakh and one thing that we always focus is the software experience if you buy a phone now it might have the new specs for a couple of months but the software is one which you are going to use for the long term so this is Manal. you're already watching TechWiser and in this video we will review all the smartphone UI of 2024 now we are going to review the smartphone UI in three parameters feature software update and bloatware and then we will put everything into tier format so let's say if a phone needs all the three parameters it goes to the go tier if it needs only two parameters, then it goes to very solid tier. And if it fails in all three parameters, then it goes to, you know it, I know it tier. Okay, so let's begin with the minimal and clean UI. Yes, the Nothing OS. So the latest stable version is called Nothing OS 2.6. And if you talk about the feature, the most highlighted one is the Glyph interface. Like you get a progress bar for timer, volume indicator, music visualizer, etc. So when you book a ride on Uber or food from Zomato, you can see this progress bar at the back. Although in our use, it only works with Uber and not even with Zomato. Funny thing here is it has been almost 1.5 year and there has been no other third party app that supports the Glyph interface. Now, other than the Glyph interface, nothing also got features like lock screen widget. So on POD, you can put your phone to silent mode, etc. And if you talk about bloatware, well, nothing has one of the cleanest record as of now. There are no bloatware on any nothing phone. Even the budget CMF phone one, which comes under 15,000 has zero bloatware. Like literally nothing? Like literally nothing. Now in terms of software update, nothing gives you 3 plus 4 years of update and it is a good reputation of providing very timely bug fixes and software update. Even the upcoming Nothing OS 3 with Android 15 is set to receive in December 2024. And currently the Nothing OS 3 beta is also open for 2A users as of now. Long story short, it's a very good smartphone UI. The only aspect it lacks is the software feature, which I think with Nothing OS 3.0 is gonna be loaded with that. But as of now, Nothing OS gets the very solid tier in our ranking. So next up we have the Xiaomi Hyper OS. Now earlier Xiaomi used to have the MI UI which has a very nasty reputation because of bugs and all. And to flip the negative sentiment they have rebranded it to Hyper OS which comes in all Redmi, Poco and every Xiaomi phones. Now Hyper OS does come with some features like lock screen customization and gestures. Hyper OS has good lock screen customization option visually like see the amount of options you get. Plus if you go further in people using iOS might have spotted it. It looks very similar to iOS. Then you also get to see this contactless gesture that we saw in Poco F6. So if you do double press motion, it pauses or play the video on the supported apps like Netflix. Apart from this, this tap on back gesture is also quite helpful. Now, there are many other features like dual apps, second space or AI razor, etc. But these have been there for many years in Xiaomi, Redmi and Poco phones. But another thing that has been there for a while are bloatwares. You get around 9 to 12 bloatware apps. Now, it is pretty understandable if the phone is around 20,000 or even 30,000. But flagship phones like Xiaomi 14, which comes with bloatwares, I mean, come on. But thankfully it has improved. Earlier the situation was quite bad as you cannot even uninstall bloatware apps. But with the Hyper OS, now you can even uninstall Xiaomi system apps like calculator. And coming to updates, what we have observed is Xiaomi did promise faster updates delivery, but that's not the case. The update cycle went from bi-monthly to only one update in 90 days. In short, the frequency is inconsistent. So long story short, there is one major area where Xiaomi needs to improve, which is bloatware. At least a phone that costs 50,000 doesn't deserve a bloatware. Plus the AI features in smart phone is something Xiaomi should consider. So Hyper OS gets the did the job tier. Next up we have the Hello UI from Yes, Motorola. So last year, Motorola used to call their UI My UX, which was close to stock Android. But earlier this year, Motorola has released their phone with a new UI called Hello UI. Still, a lot of people think that Moto phones come with stock Android, but with Hello UI, that's not the case anymore. Like, see side by side, we have the Motorola H50 Pro and the Pixel 9 Pro XL. If you see the quick settings, notification panel, or even the settings page, all are different from the stock Android. And it's not just the name change, they have added quite a lot of features as well, like Smart Connect. So see this, if I download the Smart Connect app on my Windows laptop and connect it to the Motorola phones, I have an ecosystem. I can control my phone via the laptop mouse and keyboard, drag and drop files, use the internal storage, turning on phone's hotspot without even touching my phone. Plus, I can also use my phone camera as a webcam. I mean, there are so many features that we have made a separate video on it. Now, coming to the bloatware, as of now, it's only there in Moto phones that are below 25,000. The phones like Moto H50, 50 Neo, 50 Fusion, G85, etc. Comes with pre-installed third-party apps like 
LinkedIn, Adobe Scan, etc. But you can easily uninstall them. Now, update is one area where Motorola phones don't have very good reputation as of now. And we also have this Moto Razr 40 Ultra, which is a last year flagship phone, which still has not received the Android 14 update. So overall, Motorola has made a very solid comeback. It has some good features like open ecosystem. They just need to add some practical, usable AI feature and deliver timely updates, which is why Hello UI goes to very solid tier. Okay, so next up we have the Color OS from Oppo. And it's not just for the Oppo phones. Even the OnePlus phones or Realme phones come with a similar Color OS, but with a different name of Oxygen OS or Realme OS. Like, let me show you. So here is OnePlus 2 LR and Realme Nazo 70 Turbo. And see if you open the setting page, it looks the same. Next up, if you open the app drawer, again, same. Heck, even the about phone page looks exactly the same. So Color OS equals to Oxygen OS and Realme UI. Now, if you talk about the features, you get some customization options, like you can change the image you get in the AOD, change icon pack, fingerprint animations, and all of that stuff. You also get AI eraser in the gallery app. But other than these features, there aren't many compared to the competition. And coming to the most important part, yes, the bloatware. While the Realme UI or Color OS used to come with bloatware, this year, we have started seeing bloatware even in OnePlus phones, like the OnePlus Nord CE4 or OnePlus Nord 4, etc. They have started coming with bloatware for the first time. Although as of now, the OnePlus 12R or the 12 are still safe from bloatware. But the point is, Oxygen OS, it was known for its clean, feature-rich UI. And that's not the case anymore. I guess we have to move from never settle to... But good thing is, you can uninstall all the bloatware. And in terms of update, ColorOS never had much of an issue. Most of the updates are delivered on time. So long story short, ColorOS needs to incorporate a lot of features across their Oxygen OS as well as Realme OI. But with Oxygen OS 15, there is a ray of hope as it comes with a lot of cool features. In fact, OnePlus with their recent update has been causing motherboard dead issues. So rather than adding features, the update is actually breaking the smartphone. And for that reason, I will split Oxygen OS and ColorOS. The Oxygen OS will go into You Know It, I Know It tier and the ColorOS will go to Did The Job tier. All right, moving on to Instagram's favorite UI, the Samsung One UI. Now, in terms of features, One UI is pretty insane. You get this good lock module, which has some crazy level of customization from creating your own customized keyboard to changing volume bar animation. There are a lot of things that you can customize in One UI. Plus, I also feel that One UI has some features that works really well in India, like Samsung Pay. You can add your credit card, debit card for doing contactless payment. It also has a TG Locker integration, so you can add your Aadhaar, PAN, driving license, etc. And apart from this, you can even add your flights and train tickets to the Samsung wallet. But other than these features, there's also Galaxy AI. So you get this sketch to image, then you have this AI eraser. Apart from these AI feature, it also comes with ecosystem features, but it only works with Samsung device. Overall, there are so many features in Samsung One UI. Let us know if you would want a dedicated video for it. Now, talking about the bloatware in One UI, there are two tiers. The budget Samsung phones, the M, F and A series, comes with more bloatware apps like LinkedIn, Snapchat, Spotify, etc. And you can uninstall them. In the premium FE, S or Fold and Flip series, there are almost very few pre-installed apps from Microsoft. Another area where Samsung nails it is update. It started the trend of giving 4 plus 5 year of software update and thankfully other brands have also started to follow them. And with the Samsung S24 series, they have promised up to 7 years which is on par to Apple iPhones. And not just that, Samsung also has a good reputation in terms of giving timely software updates. So to summarize, Samsung is just right up there. It has the best features and the longer and timely updates. They can work and they should work on the bloatware situation. But overall, Samsung UI goes to the GOAT tier. So next up, we have the Fun Touch OS. Now, you can find it in both IQ as well as Vivo phone. Now, if you talk about the features, well, you do get some level of customization option there. Like you can change the charging animation, choose between multiple clock styles in AOD, and I like this one. When you're done shooting a video in Boca mode, you can change the focus point and the level of blur, just like you could do it on iPhone. Apart from this, as of now, there is no AI features like AI eraser, etc. And this is the maximum number of features that you get as of today. But when it comes to bloatware, right from their mid-range to expensive flagship like Vivo X100 Pro in India, they come with pre-installed bloatware. Now, you can uninstall them easily, but then again, same question. A phone like Vivo X100 Pro that costs more than 70,000, should it have bloatware in the first place? Now talking about updates, not many people know this, but Vivo and iQ gives timely software update. In fact, FunTouch OS 15, which came with Android 15, even before Google did. So long story short, Vivo is prompt at giving software updates, but their UI design from competition point of view is still pretty basic. Plus, it lacks the functional feature as well as the AI feature, and they also need to improve their bloatware issue. So FunTouch OS, as of now, makes it to the does the job tier. But we are very hopeful about the FunTouch OS 15. Now coming to the newcomer in the Indian smartphone market. Yes, the Infinix. 
Infinix comes with XOS and in terms of feature it comes with these gestures like music gestures on the lock screen if you swipe left or right you can switch between music another cool gesture is if you write C on the lock screen it directly launches the camera and if you write M on the lock screen it launches the YouTube music app so like this you can assign multiple character gesture to open different apps and like this there are many other features like X clone for dual apps but then again these are pretty basic for 2024 standard and talking about the bloatware well it does comes with very few apps installed like Netflix Facebook and even Instagram but yeah, you can easily uninstall them. So overall, the bloatware situation for a smartphone that usually lies in the budget range is pretty decent. So in terms of software updates, since it's relatively new OS, we don't have a lot of data, but they do provide two plus three years of update. But if we take the overall view, then as of today, it gets into the does the job tier. And last, but definitely not the least, every Android enthusiast favorite, Yes, the Pixel UI. A section on the internet just love Pixel UI for its stock Android look and feel, plus the smart features it brings, like this now playing. Now I know this has been there since Pixel 6, but I still get amazed how good it works. And the best part is the now playing works without the internet. Apart from this, I really like this pesting feature that they brought with the Pixel 8 Pro last year. Then there is also audio eraser, which with a single tap, it can remove all the background noise from a video. Another feature that I and Pratik use frequently is the quick face. Like when you get a call, you just have to say answer or decline to take the call or reject it. Overall, there are just tons of smart AI features in Pixel UI. Now, in terms of bloatware, I mean, this is Android from the Android maker. So it has zero bloatware. And if you talk about the software updates, well, Pixels are known for the fastest Android updates. And from the Pixel 8 series, all the Pixel phones will get seven years of Android and security updates. So without a doubt, Pixel UI goes to the go tier. <laughs> So there you go, there goes our list. Now I know we didn't cover the Techno High OS because they still need a bit of work. That being said, do let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with this list or do you have your own list? Let us know in the comment section below. So this is Vinal signing off. Happy Diwali again to all of you. And pew pew pew. pew.